In this video, we're going to cover the HoneyBook client portal. The client portal is basically a place where your clients can interact with their project in much the same way that we do on the back end in HoneyBook. So first we want to set up our client portal settings. So you go into here and go to your company settings. This domain and client portal is where you'll manage all of these settings. So first of all, you can kind of customize the HoneyBook portal domain, or you can use a company subdomain here. So you'll just follow the steps to set that up. I think in a lot of cases, it's fine to just have designbylaney.hbportal.co, uh, but you can further white label that if you want. And then you'll have basically a link that works for anyone to sign into your client portal. So you'll end up at a page like this. And if they're new to the portal, they can just click email me a link. They'll enter the email used for their job and it will send them a magic link so that they can log in. They'll be able to set up a password if they want to and log in. And then here you have the ability to customize this screen a little bit. You can change up your logo, uh, your background color, etc. So we'll just add in, this is the only one of my brand codes <laughs> that I have memorized. So everything is just this red color when I have to type it out of memory. Um, but you can change a few things here and you can also see how it will look on mobile. And then we'll click save. And that should update. Yay, beautiful. Now, once the client logs into the portal, this is kind of what they'll see. They'll see their job in the same way that it really looks in your side of the portal. Um, they will be able to see any activity. So things that I've done, like sending them an email, um, adding them to the workspace, they'll be able to see any files. So these are smart files or files we've sent them. There's also the ability to do attachments. So I just uploaded like a picture of a return address here, um, images, etc., And then they'll have the ability with this upload to upload images or attachments as well that then I'll be able to see on their end. They'll be able to say, see any payments and then also any like details of the project. So if we go into their project, the things that they won't be able to see are generally going to be anything included in this gray box to the side. So they'll be able to see all of the emails that were sent, files, payments, and details in the same way that we can. Uh, but we're able to like add notes, tasks, time tracking, all of those different capabilities here. And then if you do want to upload just a regular PDF or image for them, you use this upload button right here. Lastly, they're not going to see that schedule button, so they aren't able to schedule directly from the portal. Now, the way that they're going to get access to the portal is basically by you just sending them the portal link. You can click it here and you can always send anyone you want this link. You can also make this link like a landing page on your website with a little button that says log into client portal so that any client can go to your website at any time and log into the portal if they want. Uh, you can also select who you want to send this to and we will review that email. You can change that email template in that section as well. And that is how they will get access to the portal in the first place. And then they'll always be able to revisit that and log in whenever they want. So it's a good idea to kind of send that link in an automated email template, for instance, you know, in that welcome to the family email, we could just send them a little thing. Hey, by the way, whenever you want to access your client portal, here's the link to do it. And here's your login instructions. So if you're sending a lot of files, if you have a, an ongoing project with a client, if you need them to upload things for you, that's all, they're always going to be here. Uh, the portal is a great way to manage that full relationship and give them access to basically all of the stuff that we're doing here, just with a little less control over it. So we're nearing the end of our How to Use HoneyBook course, which is this full playlist. In the next video, I'm going to talk about reporting capabilities in HoneyBook, and I'm super excited about this because they're making a lot of improvements here.